we just now we talked a little bit about how the uh, stratified layers of epithelial tissues are going to be important for protection. And there are two types of stratified layers. We have keratinized and non-keratinized. And keratin, you may know, uh, is a waterproofing protein that is found in the upper layers of the epidermis. And remember that stratified squamous epithelium is found pretty much all on your entire body, everything you can see. And pretty much any orifice that you go into initially is gonna be stratified squamous epithelium as well. And then as you continue into that organ, whether it be the oral cavity or the nasal cavity or the, I guess the ear canal, let me think what else, the vagina, the rectum, all of that, then the epithelium will change eventually, the urethra. Um, but everything that you see on the surface of your body is stratified squamous epithelium that is keratinized, right? This means that it has this keratin protein. And it's the same keratin that you find in your hair, um, but it's a little bit different structurally. Um, the hair keratin's a little bit uh, softer as opposed to what's in the skin. And likewise, if you remember from anatomy, your nails are actually derived from the epidermis and they too have keratinized epithelium on them, but it's a hard keratin, which gives it a different structure. So keratin does come in some different forms, but overall it helps to waterproof. And we were mentioning in lab the other day that whenever you sit in a bathtub for a long time, uh, generally the keratin helps to absorb the water and it doesn't allow the water to penetrate into the deeper layers of the epidermis and the dermis and hypodermis and so forth. So what happens is, is that this part has to pucker up because there's no place for it to go. And that's why you get that pruning appearance in your fingers and your skin. So everything that you see on, on the surface of your body, your hair, your nails, your skin, everything on the surface is gonna be keratinized. And it is de designed for protection. Everything you touch, you're leaving a little bit of your skin cells there. So you need to have that protective function. Now non-keratinized, you're gonna see um, basically in all, again, every time you go into an orifice of some sort, the epithelium that stratified squamous is gonna be non-keratinized. So we mentioned in lab that the best place to see this transition is your lip. If you look on the outer part of your lip, it's keratinized. When you look on the inner side of the lip, it's non-keratinized and you can tell because you're not worried so much about water loss um, whenever you get into the body because it's generally a moist environment as it is. Do you have any questions about that? Yes. Does that have anything to do with like eczema? Well, eczema is uh, generally, it's autoimmune, I believe, eczema is. And it does have to do with the epidermal layers, but um, in terms of affecting the keratin, I think it mainly affects the epidermal cells as opposed to like the keratin itself. Yeah, any dermatological issue generally is going to be dealing with the, the epidermis. It's a good question though. I have to look more into the mechanism. I think I, I will during the break. I'll look more into like what it, how, you know, how it directly affects the epidermal layers. I don't think it has to do specifically with the keratin though. Good question. Anything else? Yes? Are the dead cells in the moisture? The dead cells? Yeah, because that's from the right? Yes. Well, keep in mind, um, okay, one of the things, one of the things, yes, when you're looking at keratinized, uh, stratified squamous epithelium is keratinized. It's true that the cells on the uppermost surface are dead. The keratin is sort of intermixed among the cells. Um, and, you know, people say, well, okay, like you said, if the cells are dead, you know, why do you need moisture? Well, a lot of times they use exfoliation to kind of slough off any of the extra cells. 
to sort of make the upper surface a little smoother. And when you put lotion on, it doesn't go that deep, actually. It only goes through the first several layers. But what it does is it helps to smooth out that layer and it doesn't make it feel as dry. It's sort of like with your hair. You have your, um, you have your, your, your cells, uh, part of the cuticle portion of it. I don't know if you remember, but there were like um, cells that sort of were like shingles. Do you remember that? They were like little shingles. And, the, and so, you know, yeah, you know, why do you moisturize? You moisturize because you try to smooth that out and it makes it um, reflect the light more and it makes it look more shiny. Well, it's kind of similar this way, but that's why they say, like if you exfoliate the skin, it's a little better, even though the cells are still dead at the surface, you're making the layer smoother so that the lotion can penetrate a little bit deeper, maybe, and um, again, make that surface look a lot smoother and make it feel better, so it's not as dry. So that's why things like chapstick and all that help, help to, to, to make it smoother it get and it feels more protected that way because it, it just it feels smoother because definitely the cold air and stuff like that or like as you talk your your breath can 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 cause those cells that are already dead to become more flaky and like peel off and stuff like that does that answer your question that's also why they say um, and this will make you feel like you're in beauty school. Again, we revisit the integumentary system. But this is why they, they actually tell you you should try to like do chemical peels. You do chemical peels, you do like those electroshock treatments, they're not really, but you know, like, have you ever seen, I went to this salon one time and this woman gave me this whole incredible like, like, I mean, it was an amazing lesson over the, the hour that I was there of all of these different beauty things that you can do. They have these like, they're like UV or something, not UV, but it's like, um, I don't know what they use. It's some kind of like a thing. It, it literally shocks the surface of your skin. You ever seen that? And they have different ones like with different colored, um, like I think one is if you have acne and one is if it's for like wrinkles and aging or something. I don't know. Anyway, so the idea is to try to hurt the, the layers of the skin so that it stimulates more cells to be produced so that it keeps the skin active. When you age, your skin tends to become thinner. Part of the reason for that is because the dermis, the dermal layers, with the collagen, that's where the big collagen is, we're gonna see in, in lab today. That's um, very important. And, and, and the, what the, does anybody remember the cell that you find in connective tissue? It's also responsible for producing scar tissue. But it secretes, it secretes collagen as one of the things that, that it produces. It was the fibroblast fibroblasts that are down here, they tend to become less active as we get older. They just get worn out and they don't produce as much collagen. So some of those like anti-aging treatments and stuff are supposed to be there to help stimulate the fibroblast activity so that you get more collagen and the skin stays thicker and it doesn't, you know, look as old so fast. Okay, so we're gonna sing from Greece. Beauty school, job go back to college or whatever, I don't know. I never really liked Greece that much, but I just remember that song and every time that we talk about integument, I always think about that. Anyway, all right, any other questions about that? Go ahead. She said she doesn't like Greece. You don't like Greece? I like it. I, oh, well, see. I like it. We can debate Greece. We can, we can debate. Fine. I'd like to go to Greece. <laughs> I don't know if I want to <laughs> Okay, so um, all right, so getting getting back to epithelial tissues, we do have uh, a lot of other types of junctions that hold the cells together to keep them as a sheet. Um, we have uh, we have tight junctions. There are sometimes gap junctions, desmosome junctions. All these things hold the cells together in a nice uh, sheet. 
and it helps to create strength because again, these cells, you gotta remember where you find epithelial tissue, they're always found covering an organ, lining a lumen, so they, they come in contact with a lot of stuff. They have to be a pre pretty tough, so the junctions help with this, and they're separated from the underlying connective tissue by a basement membrane. And remember that epithelial tissues, in anatomy, I'm sure you saw this pattern, you're always gonna see your epithelium you know, covering the surface of something or lining the lumen, and then deep to it is always gonna be your connective tissue. It's always underneath the basement membrane, and that connective tissue can be with, you know, whichever type, depending upon the organ that you're looking at. So, <clears throat> um, so in terms of the, uh, the glands, epithelial tissues are very important for the structure of glands. They uh, the glands are derived from epithelial tissues themselves. A lot of times the epithelial tissues that are in the epidermis of the skin. So like hair follicles, for example, are derived from the epidermis. If you remember that diagram, they showed the ep epidermis dips down, but still you have the epithelial cells that make up the follicle. And you also have epithelial cells that make up the structure of the exocrine gland. Exocrine glands are glands which are gonna secrete substances outside or exiting the body, um, like sweat glands, for example. Um, so they have ducts, and these ducts can be either, we call them uh, tubular, which means that they're shaped like a test tube, or they can be a senar or alveolar, you might have heard. You know the alveoli are round structures that look like little grapes. So another word for that, alveolar, a word that's synonymous with that is a senar. So it's the same idea. If you learned it the other way, it's, it's the same. So the duct, you can see uh, the secretory portion here is tube shaped and there's just one. So it's a simple tubular arrangement. Simple senar is when you have this rounded uh, secretory portion, it's like kind of like, you know, round or like a grape. And there's only one, so it's simple to senar. And then you can also have simple branch to senar, and that's where you have multiple round secretory portions that all drain into a central duct. And that would be simple and branch to senar. It's simple because it has the one duct that it drains into, but it's branched because we have multiple secretory portions. All right. So, any questions about epithelium? Okay, we got one last tissue to talk about in chapter one before we finish it, and that is the connective tissues. And this will be good when we cover this in lab today, um, because I think the connective tissues are probably the most complicated tissue in terms of how they're structured, the cells that make it up. Sometimes it can be confusing. So. The handout actually for today's lab, if you print it out uh, before you come to lab, it'll be very useful for you because it's pretty comprehensive in terms of how it describes the structure. I've tried to make it as simple as possible. I know there are a lot of words on the page, but if you look at it, it really sort of breaks it down. But I'll try to break it down again for you here. So connective tissue is really made up of two things. It's made up of some type of specialized cell that's found in a matrix, okay? So the cell that makes up the connective tissue that we have is going to be responsible for actually producing the matrix, okay? So the specialized cell like for example, we were talking about earlier fibroblasts. We're gonna see that fibroblasts are pretty common. They are responsible for secreting the matrix, which is, you know, collagen is gonna be part of that. Okay, so a specialized cell in a matrix. Oh, they never, they never erase the board. I hope that this erases easily. One time I used one of these dry erase markers and it just didn't want to come off. Like this doesn't, this, this is dry erase, but it doesn't really want to come off. I don't know why. Anyway, okay, so specialized cell in a matrix. <clears throat> so, 
specialized cell. And that's going to depend on the type of tissue we're talking about. Okay, so <clears throat> some examples of these cells are things like fibroblasts, as I mentioned before, chondrocytes, if we're talking about cartilage, osteocytes, if we're talking about bone, or we can have things like erythrocytes or leukocytes if we're talking about blood. And then we have a matrix. All right, so the matrix is what surrounds these cells and it really makes up the body of the connective tissue. <clears throat> The matrix consists of protein fibers and there are three types. One I already mentioned, collagen. I'm just losing the thing. Collagen fibers. uninspired color. Collagen fibers, which provide strength, right? Because collagen is pretty strong. And you, you can stretch it, but it tends, when you let it go, to bounce right back to its original position. So collagen is there for strength and a little bit of flexibility, but not not a lot because again it's really tight and tough and that's why like when you're talking about the dermis when you have a lot of collagen you tend to have you know your skin bounces back more easily like you know if you feel on the back of your hand if you look at the back of your hand you know if you're younger you pull that skin up and you let it go it bounces right back because you have a lot of collagen there but as you get older and the skin gets thinner you'll pull that skin up and it'll just stay there. It won't bounce back. And that's because you lose the collagen. So that tells you a little bit about what collagen does. We also have, no ink. Who said, was I, was it you who said something about Murphy's Law? You said something, this today is all about Murphy's Law. Let me tell you that. But I also, I gotta tell you a story, not that we need to talk about it during class, but this weekend was not a fun one for me. I was burglarized. Somebody came into my bedroom while I was in there. <laughs> yeah, notice what I said Murphy's Law for me has just been ongoing. <laughs> no, I decided to go to bed early Saturday night. And I went to sleep and I woke up because I thought I heard something. And I was right. And it was really weird because there were footsteps outside my door and person who lives upstairs from me walks around a lot so it's hard to figure out like if it was them or if it was somebody in my in in my area and I listened very carefully and at first I thought perhaps it could be from upstairs but then I heard it getting like closer and closer and at that point I was like I don't know what I can do <laughs> because, I mean, you're just there, and you know they're going to come in the room at some point. So I, first I crawled on one side of the bed, and I, I like, crouched down from, like, a pan on the hide. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Because, like, when you're in that position, you, you, like, you freeze. You don't even think about it, you know? So I'm like, what the heck? My phone is right by my bed. I need to go back up. So I crawl back up on the bed, try to get my phone. And I heard the footsteps getting closer and closer, so I covered myself up and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna pretend I'm sleeping. But you know what, I couldn't do that. When I saw the door open and the flashlight shine on me, I sat up and I was like, hello? <laughs> That's what I said. And when they saw me, they ran out of there as fast as they could. But no, no joke, <laughs> no joke. Okay, that's my little PSA because for everybody in here, I know you probably thought that scenario might happen to you someday. 
I always thought that scenario might happen, but then I never wanted to think about a plan because you don't want to think that that scenario can happen to you. Please come up with a plan <laughs> because it is so much better to have a plan than to do what I did. But the police said I did the right thing because you shouldn't confront somebody when they're doing that. They said you shouldn't confront somebody. Well, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I definitely reinforced a lot of things, and yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, it is, it's weird. It's a, it's a very weird thing. The window. Nope. Well, here's the problem. My windows, they don't lock, and my landlord wouldn't fix them. And so I, I knew it, it, it was like it, one of these things where I just, I felt like it would happen someday. I just didn't know when. And that was the day, I mean, you know. But he came in that way, and then he left through the door, and the fingerprint people came yesterday. That was a fun experience. I learned a lot about criminology. <laughs> I shouldn't go over to AOJ. <laughs> now, seriously, though, the reason, in part, I'm telling you this is because it's a nice icebreaker here from, you know, that. But also, it is important. I think, I think it's really important we try to have a plan. Police told me that what you should do, try to have a lock on your door just to buy yourself time, like your bedroom door. In case, I mean, obviously, prevention's the key, like have your house locked and everything, but they, they said make sure that your bedroom door has like a lock or something on it so that um, you can have some time to call, you know, just call. I mean, when you're in that position, you're just frozen. You don't know what to do. You really don't. You've got all the... Huh? Oh, yeah? Well, I think about it. I have smart sockets in my house. All I needed to do was get my phone and just turn on one of the lights, and that probably would have been good, too. I couldn't think. I couldn't think of anything. It was, it was like, it was the most, it was the most surreal experience I think I've had. But, you know, it could have been so much worse, but like I said, just... You know, think about it. Would you do? <laughs> well, he didn't get that close to me, <laughs> so. Well, that's what the policeman said. I should get a Louisville slugger, but you know what? I'm I've never been good with baseball. I got honestly. I got a. I got a. I have this good knife. But I don't like blood either. <laughs> I guess when you're in that position, you don't care. Pepper spray might be a clean shot. <laughs> okay, so that made class go a little faster. Anyway, yeah, you didn't expect that coming from me today, huh? You never expect that. Okay. No, I live in a really nice neighborhood, but I looked around and I was like, Wow, there have been actually a lot of burglaries in the area. I didn't. I get the police water sometimes, but I didn't realize how many there were. Like recently, exactly. Well, and people and see the problem is people would think, okay, all right, I'm in a nice neighborhood. I'm just gonna leave my door unlocked. I didn't do that. But like I said, my windows they didn't they didn't they work now, but they they didn't work in that front area and I tried to get him to fix them and he didn't come fix them but he did like he did that night <laughs> all he had to do was tap them down with a hammer I didn't know how to how to fix it but anyway yeah and the good news is I learned that chances are this I think they said statistically if it happens to you once it won't happen again so I'm one and done <laughs> I finished this was my my experience and, and someday I know it well, even today it's a good story to tell, right? <laughs> and you do learn some, I mean, you do learn something from it, you know. So, anyway, all right, let's go back to this so we can finish up chapter one and we'll take a break. So, connective tissues have specialized cell, again, it can be different ones depending on the type of tissue, in a matrix. The matrix is comprised of protein fibers, of which there are three, collagen, reticular, which I don't have 
ink. That was my big problem, which got me on this. Retic reticular, R-E-T-I-C-U-L-A-R. This one doesn't work. Honestly, there is not a single other dry erase marker in the place. Anyway, reticular fibers and elastic, elastic fibers. Okay, so collagen, reticular, anytime you hear the word reticular, reticulated, you think like meshwork, spider web, that kind of thing. Um, it's there for support, reticular fibers are. And then you have elastic fibers. Elastic fibers, of course, are there to provide elasticity, which is, um, Basically, the ability of the tissue, again, to bounce back. So you can stretch it, bless you, but it bounces right back. And then the last thing for the matrix, we have protein fibers, and we also have something called a ground substance, ground substance. And that is basically all of the stuff that surrounds the cells, surrounds the protein fibers. It can be liquid, like if you think of blood and the plasma, that is ground substance. If it's bone, it's very solid and hard. Um, if you're talking about like, um, I don't know, if you're talking about cartilage, it's gonna be sort of semi-solid because cartilage is a little more flexible but when we talk about stuff like, you know, we talk about tissue fluid, you know, you've heard that term before. Tissue fluid is basically, it's the ground substance that's in the connective tissue. So, um, so those are the major components. We have, we have the uh, specialized cell which secretes the matrix. The matrix is, it's gonna consist of protein fibers, collagen, reticular, and elastic, and um, ground substance, which can be solid, like in bone, semi-solid, like in cartilage, or liquid, like in blood. So let's talk a little bit about some of the specific types of connective tissue. There are actually four major types of connective tissue. We have connective tissue proper, and then there are some subtypes. We have cartilage, bone, and blood. And again, it doesn't matter which connective tissue we're talking about, all of them have these same general components that we just talked about, okay? So first of all, we have connective tissue proper. Connective tissue proper, pretty much in all types of connective tissue proper, the specialized cell that secretes the matrix is the fibroblast. We have a couple of different types of connective tissue proper. We have loose and we have dense. Loose connective tissue proper includes areolar connective tissue. So I'll show you, this is what areolar connective tissue looks like. It has the fibroblast, which you can see here, these little purple circles are the nuclei of the individual fibroblasts. These little purple circles that you see there, those are the fibroblast cells. All of this stringy stuff are the different types of protein fibers. The real thick fibers are collagen, the intermediate, like the, the dark purple fibers that you see here, these are um, elastic fibers. And then you can't really see them so well, but there are some real wispy, sort of real light pink fibers that are the reticular fibers. And then the white space that you see here is all of the ground substance. So that's what, what the ground substance is that we're talking about, which in, Areolar connective tissue is going to be pretty much semi-solid. So areolar connective tissue is a type of loose connective tissue proper. Another type of loose connective tissue is adipose, which I'm going to just show you on the next slide so you can see it. Adipose is fat tissue. Now, in terms of connective tissue, adipose is a little bit different. Because, um, as I mentioned before, all connective tissue proper has the same specialized cell, with this exception, the adipose. The adipocytes 
or adipocyte is the cell type that you find in adipose connective tissue. And when you look at the cells, there's very little matrix that surrounds them. So that makes this a little bit different than other types of connective tissue. There's not a lot of matrix material surrounding it. Generally, adipose connective tissue's main job is to store triglycerides or fat for, for storage, for energy, for later on. And the nucleus is usually pushed out to the side of the adipocyte. So we have connective tissue proper, our first type of connective tissue. Two general classes of connective tissue proper. We have loose and dense. So we just finished talking about loose. Loose consists of areolar connective tissue and adipose. Okay, Areolar connective tissue has all these different protein fibers and all this matrix and the fibroblast cell that makes all of this. Whereas adipose, adipose consists of the adipocyte and very little matrix between the cells. The second kind of subclass of connective tissue proper is dense connective tissue. And it's called that because it usually is very kind of dense because it has a lot of collagen fibers in it, which are the real thick fibers we mentioned before. Dense connective tissue proper can be dense regular or dense irregular. Dense regular means that the collagen fibers are tightly packed together and they're regularly arranged. So you're gonna find this in places like tendons and ligaments. You know, think about your patellar tendon to your tibia, right? To your tibial tuberosity, okay? That is made of dense regular connective tissue. All the collagen fibers arranged in one direction. Remember I told you collagen's tough to stretch, but you can. When I bend my knee, I'm stretching the collagen fiber. But when I straighten my knee, does that tendon go floppy? No, it bounces right back to its original position. But the fact that the collagen fibers are arranged in parallel in one direction allows for stretching and recoiling in the same direction. So tendons and ligaments are gonna be made of dense regular connective tissue. Dense irregular connective tissue um, also contains collagen, but the collagen fibers are arranged not in a regular way at all. Um, and you're gonna find this in the dermis um, of the skin. And when you think about it, you know, when you take your, your skin on the back of your arm, you can twist it all different ways, right? You can pull it up, you can pull it to the side, you can pull it back, forth, whatever. It might get red when you let it go, but when you let it go, it will bounce back to its original position because the fibers are arranged in different ways, which allows for that bounceability in different directions. Does that make sense? So you have dense regular and dense irregular. Okay, so recap. First, we have four types of connective tissue. We have we have connective tissue proper, we have adipo, or I'm sorry, we have bone, blood, and cartilage. The connective tissue proper consists of two subclasses, loose and dense. Primarily, all of the connective tissue proper has the specialized cell of the fibroblast, with the exception of adipose. Loose connective tissue proper includes areolar and adipose. Areolar connective tissue has the fibroblast, collagen fibers, reticular and elastic, in a fairly even ratio. Um, adipose doesn't have much matrix and its cell type is adipocyte. Whereas with dense connective tissue, we have dense regular and dense irregular. The fibroblast is the cell that secretes the matrix in these two types of tissues. Dense regular, which is shown here, collagen fibers are arranged in parallel in tendons and ligaments. Dense irregular, which is not shown, is in the dermis of the skin, and it allows for stretchability and recoilability in multiple directions. Okay, any questions so far? All right, so next type of connective tissue, we have cartilage, and there are three types of cartilage, but all cartilage has the cell of a chondrocyte. The chondrocyte 
is found um, in a little chamber called a lacuna. And then those of you, which one of you know the joke? What's the joke? Where do you, where did the chondrocyte go on vacation? Lacuna Beach, right, Lacuna Beach. So remember, Lacuna is the little chamber, the little house in which the chondrocyte sits. Because when the chondrocyte secretes this matrix around itself, it's gonna get trapped in there and it needs a little space. And that's what the Lacuna is. So we have three types of cartilage all produced by the chondrocyte. The one that's shown here is hyaline cartilage. The only thing that makes cartilage different is the protein fiber composition in its matrix. Hyaline cartilage has um, collagen in it, its matrix, but it's a fine type of uh, collagen, which makes that matrix look very glassy, which is what hyaline means. And you're gonna find this in the fontanelles and the fetal skeleton uh, before the baby's born. And again, remnants of that are the fontanelles and the skull. Um, the other type of cartilage we have is fibrocartilage. It's going to have a lot of uh, fibrous connective tissue in, in the matrix. And you're gonna find this in places like the intervertebral discs. This is a really tough cartilage, probably one of the toughest cartilages. Um, it takes compression force as well, which is why it's found in intervertebral discs or in the meniscus of the knee. And we have elastic cartilage, which has a lot of elastic protein fibers in the matrix. And you're going to find this in your external ear, which is why you know, your external ear has support, but you can also bend it and it can bounce back to its original position. So those are the three types of cartilage, places where you'd find it. Chondrocyte makes up all three of these, and they're all found in the lacuna. Any questions about that? All right, third one is bone. Bone is the third connective tissue that we're talking about. Remember that all connective tissues, the job is to connect, which is connect different things, which is why it's called connective tissue. And of course, bone helps to connect um, a lot of uh, our structures. It connects uh, muscles, for example, to different places. Um, bone consists of basically three types of cells. The one that builds the matrix is the osteoblast. Remember that the B means that it builds. It builds the bone, the bony matrix. Now osteoblasts will, when they secrete the matrix, become trapped in that matrix. And again, they're gonna also be found in little chambers called lacunae. And what happens is, is that this matrix, which surrounds, um, uh, which surrounds the, the osteoblast, when the osteoblast is contained in the lacuna, it becomes less active, which makes it into an osteocyte. Okay, so an inactive osteoblast is an osteocyte. And then we have a different kind of cell called the osteoclast, which breaks down bone. So that's gonna do the opposite. It's gonna cause the bone to break down. So for example, if the body doesn't have enough calcium to run its system um, for you know, muscle contraction or whatever, then the osteoclast may start to borrow some of that calcium from the matrix, which is where osteopenia and osteoporosis will start to develop. Any questions about that? All right, last and then the break. Um, okay, we have blood. Blood is a connective tissue. We have here um, a different type of connective tissue in a way. Uh, because in all the other types of cell, or all the other types of tissues that we talked about, we have a specialized cell that secreted the matrix. But in blood, it's different. Because the cells that you find in blood are red blood cells and white blood cells, known as erythrocytes and leukocytes. But these are not responsible for producing the matrix. In fact, the plasma of the blood actually comes from, um, from the tissue fluid. So the connective tissue fluid that's around, um, that's where the plasma comes from. It does, it's not secreted by the red and white blood cells. 
We also have platelets, which we talked about a little bit earlier in this chapter when we talked about positive feedback loops. These are responsible for helping to produce blood clots, and we're going to talk about that in lab shortly, uh, I think next week. Uh, but platelets are not cells themselves. They are fragments of a large cell called a megakaryocyte. And they're actually really cool cells because their cytoplasm is sort of partitioned off. And so when they need to release platelets, basically they just peel off and the platelets are there. So um, platelets, they're found in the blood, but they are fragments of cells, not true cells. The cells that are found in that, in that connective tissue are the erythrocytes and leukocytes. The matrix is, is liquid and again is the plasma. <coughs> And that is it for chapter one. Go ahead, take your break. Take 10, I guess, come back around, I guess 10.30, 10.27, 10.30. And um, we'll resume with chapter two talking about